ladies and gentlemen, moving further without any uh, delay, we are moving towards our next fireside chat, which is with Mr. Ramalingam Subramaniam, Chief Marketing Officer, Coin DCX, and Ms. Chanpreet Arora, Business Head, Boot AVOD. May I request our speakers to please join us? A very warm welcome. Hi. Hello, Ms. Arora. Hi, it's Hope a pleasure to be here. Very warm welcome to both of you and uh, lovely to have you here. We are looking forward to the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Ram. It's a pleasure to finally be here together. Sure, a... Thank you so much. Great. So, um, you know, one of the most exciting things, like before we, uh, before we talk about Coin DCX and your role there or my role at Woot, we... Uh, I just want to talk about how excited I am to talk about cryptocurrencies. It's actually, I've spent a whole week uh, reading up more about cryptocurrencies before we have this conversation about how we build a brand. Um, and one of the most striking things uh, that, you know, in the previous session, we had this entire conversation about technology and uh, I'm, I've actually taken some screenshots from the previous presentation. We're talking about headless headless marketing now that takes it to a next level for me and uh, this session is going to be more focused about the brass tags and the building blocks of how uh, we build brands uh, with with people through different platforms so one of the most striking things ram that i read today was the global cryptocurrency market capitalization is more than 1.5 trillion dollars right uh, however the awareness and adoption uh, of cryptocurrency in India is still at a very nascent stage. And uh, players such as CoinDCX uh, and the industry at large has an uphill task to build awareness and trust in the industry and not just for their own brand. So without much further ado, I'm just gonna launch into my first question about how do you build trust uh, and, uh, and build awareness in a volatile environment for an industry? which in itself is lacking trust, right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you so much uh, for having me here, first of all. Uh, see, trust, right? Uh, where, where does it come from? How, how do you believe in a brand or how would you believe in a, a particular industry, right? It's, it's about uh, uh, trying to build, build the, uh, the right kind of uh, understanding of a product or understanding of a of a brand what india lacks is not uh, i wouldn't say it's a it's a challenge of trust but it's more a challenge of uh, misinformation right or a lack of understanding and at at various levels it's it's not just uh, it's not that the larger consumer does not understand but it's it's in the various spaces it is either misunderstood or people uh, or the way it was it was portrayed at the first time, perhaps people uh, have certain uh, notions about it. How do you go about building that trust? Um, we, so this is what we believed. We felt that it's a three-step process. I need to build education. I need to uh, build comfort. When, it, when I say comfort, build products that are simple and safe for people. Okay. And lastly, uh, work in an environment which is uh, comfortable for uh, everyone to uh, put their in money in, right? See, it's it's not an uh, it's it's unlike other products out there in the market. This is an investment asset. People have uh, ha like, like earned that money hard, and they want to now invest into something which they are first of all very confused about, right? So we need to build that conducive environment, and it's up to us as the players in the industry to do that. Right. Uh, so, as we said, right, these three steps, uh, our focus was on building education. We, we launched uh, an, a complete education portal called DCX Learn. That was the first step that we took uh, last year when we went big in trying to uh, focus on the entire uh, adoption piece in India. We launched this entire Tri Crypto campaign last year with the focus that we need to reach out to 50 million Indians. Now, for that, the first step we took was not uh, run an advertising campaign, but to build an education portal, right? Uh, then we we went ahead creating uh, that comfort. So building simple products, building uh, uh, so mechanisms by which, for example, uh, what are the uh, 
asset classes in pe which people should invest in right now it's not an exchange's job to tell you should do this or do that however in an environment where it people are just about to enter and explore it there is some amount of responsibility that exchanges have to give them a guided path i'm not we are not recommending a particular thing but when you talk about 8000 plus uh, assets out there and when people are struggling to understand one it it was we felt that it is um, we need to come up with an unbiased method to introduce them to a certain category of uh, tokens or uh, assets which are safe to begin with it's right. not that they cannot go into other assets we have a, a different product available for people who want to uh, invest into say different tokens want to do do um, some amount of advanced trading we have a product for that but for when when it comes to mass consumption for the first time user we decide, we decided to limit that uh, and lastly build a product Uh, that was that was easy for everyone to use right and then came the entire advertising so that was the structure that we had and uh, like like in the words of uh, howard schultz uh, who who led uh, starbucks if we if people believe uh, with the with the with the values of a company they mm. start becoming loyal to it and that's what we have started experiencing uh, why because people understood and ex- um, appreciated the way we went ahead uh, in the entire adoption curve and i believe uh, these would be the right steps to um, build trust along with uh, acquiring more and more customers that's right oh, okay thank you so much so you know there's a very interesting uh, point that you brought up which is trust uh, uh, trust in the player and trust in the people uh and even now in india and i know a lot of people mock at me personally when i say i am totally dependent on my financial planner so the first thing i did personally was pick up the phone and asked him should i be investing in cryptocurrencies and he said i have no clue so so is there um, you know this there are a lot of people in the b2b segment that are involved in enabling investments in india uh so my one question is are you taking steps in educating the intermediaries as well is that kind of a system that's working for you because while you're a b2c solution you also have this b2b category to cater to yeah, yeah so so when we started dcx learn so dcx learn is a portal where you can go and uh, learn right learn about crypto blockchain about how to trade and so on and so forth but dcx learn as an initiative was also heavily driven via the community approach so right. we regularly do seminars we regularly do training programs for as you pointed out intermediaries uh, financial planners uh, we have done uh, work with uh, with the, the big fours training their people uh, and so on and so forth so yes this is an important uh, aspect um, but we also believe so this is also something around about blockchain right it's an interesting part which talks about uh, decentralization mm, right? that's generally right. as you pointed out right that that's how it is we go to our financial planner we we have to believe in someone we have to trust someone yes right? the whole concept of blockchain and bitcoin talks about a trustless system where people can actually come up and uh, uh, take their own decisions without depending on someone like you can obviously consult someone but you don't need to depend on someone to take a decision okay. so it's a balance we have to uh, uh, use the traditional approach educate the uh, educate the masses and including the educate the financial planner out there but the goal of uh, the entire blockchain and the financial revolution has been to bring that power back Uh, that that power back to the people and build us ecosystem it's it might sound utopian right now but build a, a decentralized uh, ecosystem okay so uh, i'm going to segue into this uh, ecosystem uh, approach you know when when an ecosystem is being built uh, on one side there is the government which is evolving in its thinking process and uh, on what the ecosystem should be and then there are players that come in right and a lot of times you see that players are making mistakes as we all are aware how do you uh, how are you dealing with that while there may be some players or there may be regulation and which both are impacting the trust of the uh, trust for the industry at large what role do you think coin dcx is playing or should be playing uh, 
uh, in this entire scenario to build trust at an industry level. Right. So there are um, we, we are such a small industry today uh, yeah. that uh, obviously we know each everyone in the in the industry. We know all our colleagues. We we have been we have been at dinners and these are the regular stuff that happens. Uh, and this is always a, a common belief that we have that is keeping us all together. Um, the beliefs that this ecosystem needs to be built. Yes, people will make mistakes here and there. The objective of uh, a, a leader in the pack is to ensure that we are all aligned to a certain goal, right? Mm -hmm. And we are all aligned to a particular objective. And this is a constant dialogue that keeps on happening within the industry itself. When it comes to the government side as well, see, government is what it's 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 the biggest example of decentralization. It's democracy today. The powers lie with the people, and it is of the people. And if the people are not aware, I don't think the of the people will also be as much aware, right? And it's not their fault. The technology is evolving so fast. There is there are new avenues that have opened up, and I'm I'm very happy that the government is taking steps towards it, right? So. Even the latest uh, uh, announcements made from their part, they are taking steps to understand what this is all about and come up with a system by which they can create a, a, a facilitative framework uh, to, to regulate this, this environment. And uh, so that, see, the intention from all parties here, uh, be it industry, be it the regulators, is, is all about protecting the investor at the end of the day. The person who is taking that, taking that uh, risk in investing should, should have some kind of a protection and that's the interest across. And that is something that we definitely, uh, definitely welcome, definitely recommend that the government should work on. And we are happy the way in which, uh, uh, the way in which the communication is happening at the government level within the industry, the way we, we all, the, the, all the players are talking about it. Um, yes, there are reports that keep on uh, uh, springing up here and there, but in general, the, the overall sentiment today is definitely one of hope and one of positiveness there. Great. So if we have to simplify this for an average user, right, like just uh, assuming even from a brand building perspective, the only comparable that I could come up with was that gold at some level would have had a cult status. It's not that gold is used for industry. It's not that gold is particularly used for anything except there is a certain perceived value of gold because at one point in time it was currency, right? I feel like it's come a it's the it's come a full circle where uh, now we have uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, except for USDT. I don't know if there are any others, but there there are lots of currencies and. I can't, re we can't really define what is the base value or the inherent value of the currency. How do you approach that question? It's part technology and part pure understanding. Like, what is the comparison? And if you can talk in reference to how you see gold having evolved. Sure. It would have sure. So this is, this is gentle, definitely a question that is asked a lot. People ask, uh, what's the intrinsic value of Bitcoin? Like, where does it get its value from? Why is it priced at a particular point? And the, the simple uh, uh, argument to that is, why is gold priced at something? Uh, so jewelry is a very small use case, but beyond that, uh, the biggest use case today for gold is store of value, right? And where does that value come from? It's It generally stems from what we call as a network effect, right? People believe in its value. People believe that there is, if I store uh, my uh, reserves in gold, it, it has certain value, and I can I can go ahead. And the same happens with uh, with say bond, the bonds market, with uh, with currency in itself, right? Where the the idea about Bitcoin is is very similar, right? And there are different other assets that are there, but Bitcoin is very similar to a gold. Uh, gold as an asset class. Uh, how you you can buy a portion of gold, you can invest in that, you can store it for, say, the future. Same way you can do it with Bitcoin. Is there a, a volatility in the market? Yes. It, as, as it is there with gold, as it is there with uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's there with all other asset class. When it is a tradable commodity, there is volatility as a feature. It's there with Bitcoin. Uh, 
and various other uh, uh, assets that are there within crypto space but it is just another form of an investment which will which is driven by a network effect similar to the network effect of gold so as a as a final wrap up question ram thank you for you know humoring our basic questions but if as a marketer for any ma other marketer who's dealing with an industry which is so evolving is still self regulated regulation is you know whereas financial industries uh, any financial asset under sebi and sc psc is heavily regulated what would it take for any marketer like over a period of 5 years or 10 years maybe even in the coming decade what are the top 3 pegs that you would focus on to help get bitcoin to the same mainstream gold status that uh, we have today so um see uh, the three pieces that i point highlighted earlier education making it comfy making people comfortable about it and then coming up with a solution that is compliant with existing laws right uh, we believe these are the steps uh, to go ahead one thing that as a marketer we should remember is um, having discipline right in a unregulated environment uh, it, it's it's we are like one of those uh, newborn kids out there right we can do whatever we want and people will say are bachcha hai jaane do right we are in that space yeah. but how do i evolve into someone who is respected who has that kind of a trust is once i i take that understanding of being disciplined across whatever i do and holding ourselves uh, accountable to our own value system right market while i i can have a business pressure to acquire uh, Is acquire customers, get x amount of revenue, drive profits. It really ends up uh, on how I stay close to the value system that we we actually started the business on, and how do we stick to it as we start scaling? There will be many questions that will come in as we go forward in the years to come. We might and I'm looking forward to regulations coming in. They might change the dynamics of the industry in itself, but are they close to the value system that? uh we started with and those campaigns those activities as marketers that uh, at the, that kind of comms that we use is something that i feel uh, will help us grow the the stature of uh cryptos as an asset class coin dcx uh, as a brand uh, working in this space and overall the industries in india because one thing that i truly believe uh, which which has come from our uh, founders also is that there has been uh, multiple uh, uh, revolutions within the tech space there is one where uh, india as a country uh, wasn't a big part when the first revolution came in the second revolution most likely was built by indians but the capital was not uh, put in by the by indians right but this is a stage where in the capital is indian this technology indians are building uh, building it up and this is a right time for us uh, to help and contribute towards this this overall dream of uh, of nation building that everyone uh, shares here right so this is a point that we can achieve we don't want to miss out on it that's that's the that's the whole uh, bottom line all right thank you so much it's been a pleasure to hear your perspectives Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Rora, and thank you, Mr. Subramanian. What a beautiful note to end this conversation also on. That this is the right time for us to build the nation in whichever field we are. So thank you so much, both of you, for your time. For you know this insights that you brought to the table. Thank you once again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having us.